What's up everyone, it's Dwarfin87 here to bring you a new video. Welcome back to Today in WoW, a section of my channel where we go over the daily activities and uh, the daily news here in World of Warcraft. As you expect, yesterday was Saturday, so there's not a lot of news to go over. However, we do have activities that we can talk about. A new Emissary quest kicked in this morning. We still have Champions of Astra that is going to be due within the next 24 hours. Talanji Expedition for the Horde and Stormworks for the Alliance, which is going to be due in the next 48 hours. And we recently got Tortolan Seekers, which is going to be due in the next 72 hours. In addition to that, we also have the Champions of Astra quest. There's a total of three here in Sandalar. As always, two of them are going to be Empowerment, and one of them is going to be Azerite Madness. There's going to be one here in Suldasar, which is going to be an Azerite Empowerment quest. It is going to be located on the east side of the map. The last two are going to be located in Boldoom. An Azerite Empowerment quest is going to be on the north, and Azerite Madness is going to be on the east. The other three are going to be located in Kultiras. The first one's going to be in Tigerat Sound, which is going to be right in the middle of the map, off of the beach. We're also going to have one in Dross Bar, which is going to be an Azerite Empowerment quest right in the middle of the map. And the last one's going to be in Stormsome Valley, which is going to be right off the middle of the map, off of the beach as well. Warfronts are still available for the Alliance to complete the Battle of Stromgarde. We have 3 days left and 10 hours. So if you're in North America and you're part of the Horde, this is the time where you start accumulating your resources for us to turn in, in order for us to complete the Battle of Stromgarde as well. That's with always a portal's open for you to be able to go in there, kill the world boss if you haven't yet, you still have 3 days left. Kill any rares for toys, mounts, or equipment. Since we didn't have any news here in the World of Warcraft yesterday, uh, Saturday tends to be pretty slow. I do want to make an announcement that I will be going over PTR on Monday instead of Tuesday, as I mentioned yesterday. The reason behind that is because there is uh, quite a few things that uh, did happen on PTR, and there's a few models that we want to go over, there's storyline to go over, equipment and class changes that we're going to be going over tomorrow. If I added that to the Tuesday reset video, it's going to make the video a little bit lengthier, which defeats the purpose of this small package videos for you guys to kind of go over within 10 minutes and see what's new out there. Since there was not a lot of news yesterday, I do want to go over one of the things that I didn't get a chance to go over when it released. As many of you know, a couple of resets ago, we did get the release of Pulse of Containment for the LFR. Pulse of Containment is the first wing with three bosses, where you can kill and obtain equipment through the LFR system, normal rating, heroic rating, or mythic rating. The loot table for all four of them are the same, however it varies depending on the uh, difficulty in which you complete this raid. LFRI grants 340 level equipment, Normal grants 355 level equipment, Heroic grants 370 plus equipment, and Mythic rating gives you 385 plus. There's a few pieces of Azerite armor that are in here as well, so I wanted to go over the loot table for each one of them, as you need to make decisions on when you're going to be able to use your seals that you get every week. So I know sometimes you don't have the time to do the research to try to figure out exactly what pieces of equipment are out there for each one of the bosses. So I'm going to do a quick recap of that now. The first boss that you encounter when you go into uh, Holes of Containment is going to be Talok. Talok only drops one cloth armor piece, so this is going to be the one that he drops. The name of the item is Volatile Walkers. He drops a total of two leather armor pieces, which can be either Agility or Intellect. We get the Gloves of Descending Madness and Bloodstorm Buckle. For the male wearers, he does drop either Agility or Intellect. He, do he drops the Ruby Rope Spark Guards and the Leg Guards of Colossian Plasma. For plate wearers, he drops the Grease of an Ending Vigil and the Crimson Colossal Arm Guards. He also drops a couple of trinkets. One of them is going to be Intellect based and the other one is going to be Agility based. The Vigilant Blood Shaper is available for anybody who wants Intellect and the Construct Overcharger is available for the Agility Wearers. Talok also drops a couple of weapons. One of them is going to be a 1, which is going to be the Titan Spark Animator. And the last item that he drops is a 2-hand mage, which is the Core Hammer of Corrupted. After you defeat Talok the Corrupted, you get a chance to beat Mother. Mother is the second, Mother is the second boss uh, here in Old Year, Hulse Containment. Mother does drop only one cloth item as well, which is going to be the Leggings of Linger and Infestation. She drops the Pathogenic Leg Guards, which is going to be a leather piece, uh, which can come with Agility or Intellect. Two more male pieces are available here, and this is going to be the Gloves of Involuntary Amputation, and the Flame Sterilized Spaulders. The Flame Esterilized Spaulders is the first piece of Azerite equipment that you can get through this specific raid. 
She drops two plate pieces, the Contaminator's Great Belt, which is going to have strength or intellect, and the Grid Runner Galea, which is going to be the second piece of Asteroid equipment that can drop from this specific raid. Does not drop any trinkets, but you're able to get a ring, which is going to have stamina, critical strike, and haste. This is going to be the Rod Scour ring. Mother drops a total of four weapons. The first set of weapons is going to be a one hand mace, which is going to be Mother's Twin Gaze. This is an agility, critical strike, and haste piece. And she also drops the older subject manifest, which is going to be an intellect, critical strike, and versatility piece. The last two weapons are going to be uh, the Latian's Work Scalpel, which is a dagger. The last piece is going to be a War Glaive, which is a Glaive of the Keepers. It's going to have agility, critical strike, and haste. The last boss in Halls of Containments is going to be Sec Boss. Sec Boss is the only boss in this raid that drops two pieces of cloth equipment. The first one being Void Lash Wristband and the second one being Mantle of Contained Corruption. This is the only piece of Azerite Imod cloth equipment that gets dropped in this raid. He also drops the replicated Cheating Core, which is going to be a waist leather piece, and a Quarantine Protocol Tretch, which is going to be uh, boots. He also drops two pieces of mail armor, which is going to be the Titan Spark Energy Girdle, and another Azerite Armor piece, which is going to be the Chain Best of a Sword Quality. He drops two pieces of plate armor, which is the War Boots of Absolute Eradication, and the Grease of Creeping Darkness. There's a strength based trinket that drops from this boss, which is going to be the Disc of Systematic Regression, and an other ring that drops in here, which is the Ring of Infinity Void. This is going to be a Critical Strike and Mastery Ring. Last two pieces is going to be a two hand pole arm, which is the Void Binder. It's an Agility, Haste, and Versatility piece and a one-hand maze, which is Intellect, Versatility, and Mastery uh, piece that is called Containment Analysis Bad. So once again, just as a quick recap, there's a total of four Asurai pieces here in this specific raid. Two of them are from Mother, and the last two are from Sec Boss. So Mother is going to drop your mail piece and your plate piece, and then Sec Boss is going to drop your cloth and your mail as well. There's no letter pieces on this specific uh, wing of Pulse of Containment, so if you're a rogue or a druid like myself, or you don't get any asteroid armor in this specific wing. I hope this information was valuable to you. If you would like to see little segments like these being added, uh, please comment below. I will be happy to keep adding those. As you know, the second wing of LFR, which is going to be called Crimson Descent for Old Deer, is going to be opening up this coming Tuesday. So I will make sure to add something similar to this to one of the videos along the week in order for you guys to know exactly where to spend your seals. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. This is Dwarfin87 signing off. See you on our next video.